Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris and welcome to episode number eight of my Lightroom Photoshop and photography tips. Last week, we took two photos. This was the first photo, a normal exposure of a landscape in Megev in the Alps. And then we took this underexposed photo and then we blended it using layers, giving that result. This week, we're going to have some more fun. I'm going to show you my workflow doing panoramas. I love doing panoramas because they give you very big files, very high definition files, huge prints. And I explain all this in the tutorial. Basically, we're going to take these seven photos, correct them into Lightroom because you will see there are some exposure issues to correct, to turn them into this. And then we're going to blend them and give them a look, a complete different look. Uh, I love to cheat in Photoshop and this is what I will show you today. So I say let's get started and let me show you how we do this. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs. So today we are going to do a panoramic. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, merge the seven photos into one. But first we're going to retouch it into Lightroom to uh, correct some exposure issue and to give it a bit of a first look. Then we're gonna merge them into Photoshop and give it a final look into Photoshop. I shot this panel, I make a little mistake actually when I shot this panel because I shot it into AV mode. If you look at the information on the photo, you will see that this photo is at one two hundred of a second at 6.3. And for example, this photo is at one two hundred and fifty of a second at 6.3. That means that the shutter speed was a bit faster on the second photo giving a bit of a darker photo. So I want to correct that before I merge them to give them the best look possible because they need to look all the same. So we have some exposure issue to correct. But the first thing I'm going to do is take the first photo, give it a look, and I'm going to sync it with all the other seven photos. So to start with, I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit so we see a bit more the foreground. And I'm going to bring down the highlights as usual. Then I'm going to click here on the ND filter. And as you know, the ND filter gives you the possibility to create a gradient on some part of the image and all these settings will be done on the gradient basis. For example, if I lower the exposure and I make a, a gradient, so I start to click here and I drag down here, um, the lower, this lower exposure is going to be applied on the gradient. So I'm going to lower that even more. I'm going to boost a bit more the contrast in the sky uh, and maybe bring a bit of saturation in the sky to make it very blue. Okay, something like that. Then I'm going to close this. Before I, uh, I sync my setting on this one on, the, on all the photos, I'm going to go down and I'm going to do some, um, I'm going to enable the profile correction, which is going to take the vignetting off the photo, which, which is going to make the merging a bit easier, you know, uh, for Photoshop because it's going to have less correction to do. And um, maybe I'm just going to lower slightly a bit the overall exposure and then I'm going to do my whites and blacks. So, so I'm going to press Alt, go on the right with the white until I see some white pixels. That's the formula. And here we are at plus 40. I start seeing some white pixels and then I'm going to do the same thing with the blacks, but the opposite. I press on Alt uh, for Windows or Option on Mac and I go left until I see some dark pixels. That's going to correct my contrast. Okay, something like that. I go usually a bit more on the blacks than I go on the whites. Okay, something like that. Maybe not that much. All right, now that I've corrected that first photo, I'm going to shift click all seven photo and click on sync. So they are all, they are all synchronized now. The photo is a bit dark. So maybe I'm going to adjust the exposure. I think I went a bit too dark on the first one. So I'm going to bring back the exposure normal. I'm going to click sync again to sync back that exposure everywhere. Okay, now I have the look that I want. But before I merge them, I need to correct this little slight exposure issues that we had. So I click on the second photo and I see it was one two hundred and fifty of a second. That means the photo is a bit darker than the first one. So I'm going to take my exposure and I'm going to make this one just a little tiny bit brighter, like 0.10 for example. Then I take the third photo. This one is at 1 400 of a second, so it's even darker. So I'm going to take the exposure and bring it at 0.2 to make it a bit brighter. Then I'm taking the next photo, which is also at 1 400 of a second. So 
as I did on the prior one, I'm going to bring it at 0 0.2 uh, more exposure. Then I take this, the next one, 1 400th of a second, doing the same setting, 0 0.2. Then the next one, which is at 1 500th of a second. So this one is even darker. So I'm going to bring the exposure at 0 0.35. And the last one is at 1 400 of a second. So I'm going to bring the exposure at 0 0.2. So I have a bit balanced the exposure on all seven photos. They, they look kind of all the same now. So now I'm ready to merge them into Photoshop. So for this, I right click and I go edit in, merge to panorama in Photoshop. This is going to launch Photoshop and merge them into one huge file. Uh, it's going to take a while, so I'm going to pause this video until it's done. Once I'm in Photoshop, I have this option to, uh, I have different options. I'm just going to select Auto. I just make, make sure that Blend Images Together is uh, checked, but I'm not going to do the vignette removal because I've done it in Lightroom and I find it it's better how I did it in Lightroom. And I'm not going to do the geometric distortion correction either. So I just click on OK and now it's going to work. So I'm going to pause again until it's done. Okay, so Photoshop did its job and merged all the seven photos into one. I press Z, Z to uh, zoom out so you can see the whole photo. So now what I do is I go into uh, layers, merge layer to merge all the layers into one. Then I'm going to take the crop tool and I'm going to crop the photo to what I like. Uh, something like this. I like to leave a, quite some sky. Yeah, something around like this maybe a bit less on the sky voila um oh i had some settings here so i pressed on this to undo the settings so yeah i'm gonna do this again okay something like this you know that's the basic cropping you know i like to have a bit more sky than to have a bit uh, than the ground and uh, I press enter. Now the advantage of the, one of the advantage that I love about doing pano is that if you look at the size of the file, I go into image, image size, it's 10,478 pixel large. And that gives you a very, very high resolution file, you know, with a lot of details. Look at this, if you zoom in, you know, it's very, uh, there's a lot of details in the photo because it's a huge file. You can really zoom in big time in it. So let me click on the, um, fit screen and uh, so you can make huge prints I have done prints which are like three meters long you know doing this technique of, of doing panos and they have incredible details so that's one of the big advantage of doing panos now before I could just stop here because I kind of like the result but I want to do more uh, one thing that I want to do is I want to give it a look and I want to show you a trick that I used to give it uh, to give it a warm look. This was taken very early in the morning and I was a bit disappointed because I expected a bit of a warmer look. So I'm going to cheat in Photoshop and give that warmer look now. For this, I'm going to add a gradient adjustment layer. So the gradient adjustment layer by default is, you know, white to transparent. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and I'm going to choose the fourth option, which is usually a red to green gradient. I'm going to click on OK. OK. And now we are finished. No, not exactly. So here's a gradient fill. I have the green on the top and the red on the bottom. I'm going to put this, this whole layer into soft light. Soft light is going to blend the, the colors. Now the colors are not right. I don't want to have green on the top and red on the bottom. So I can just click back on the gradient when I've put it, once I've put it in overlay mode. I click back here on the gradient and we have this little window here. So first I'm going to take care of the bottom. So I'm going to click on the red here, which is the color at the bottom. Choose that color and I'm going to take a warmer color, uh, something like this. And you can just click around, you know, choose any color and in real time you see how it looks. I want to give it a, a warmer look, something like this. Um, maybe a bit more yellow, so I'm gonna boost that up. A bit more saturated, but if you go to the right, you add a saturation, and if you go, and you go to the left, you take out saturation. If you go up, you, uh, you make it brighter, and if you go down, you make it darker. So I'm gonna make it, uh, you know, you can just choose whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna go for Maybe a bit brighter, but a bit warmer. Something like this for the for the bottom. I click on OK, 
And now I'm going to take, click on the greens here and greens there to change the sky. On the sky, I also want to have a warm tone. Um, maybe, no, maybe something like this. Um, a bit darker because I want to, in the same time, to get the, the clouds to be seen a bit better. Maybe a bit redder. Yeah, so that we have, you know, a bit something like this. Yeah, something like that. Okay, then I click on OK and on OK. So now I have put a gradient to that photo, which totally changed the color of it. Now the, the effect is a bit strong, so I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit. Something like that. And also you have a mask, a white mask, meaning it's revealing the entire gradient. Now, for example, I'd like the C to be a bit more blue, so I can take a brush here, uh, make it an opacity of maybe 30, make it lower by pressing Alt and Control, so you can decide the size that you want. I'm going to just paint a little bit here on the water to get the water a bit back of its original blue color, you know, just a little bit, so it looks a bit more natural. Okay, now... I think the whole photo is lacking a bit of contrast and one thing that I like to do when I do contrast is to add a hue and saturation layer but put that layer into soft light also. That's going to heavily add some contrast to the photo, a lot too much, so I'm going to lower the opacity of that layer until I get something that I like. Um, if I go to that zero I have nothing, maybe something like around yeah 46%. And then you can use, um, then I can use the, um, the, this option here as a saturation to make it a bit more saturated, which I want to do, and may, maybe a little bit brighter, something like that. Now check it out before, after. It's just a contrast that I like. Now I find that the, the, the sky needs to be a bit darker. So one thing you can do is click here on the bottom layer and click here on FX and add a gradient overlay. Now, the gradient overlay I'm going to use is a dark to white, which is what we have here, but I'm going to reverse it. I want the dark part to be on the top and the white part to be at the bottom. And you can move your gradient as you want. I want the dark part to be a bit lower here because I want to darken the sky. And to darken the sky, the blend mode that we're going to use is either overlay uh, or multiply, which is too much. So I'm going to go for, or maybe soft light. Soft light is cool. Now the effect is a, is a lot too strong. You can see before the effect, after the effect. So I'm going to just lower the opacity of that gradient. I just want to darken a bit the sky, you know, not so much, but a little bit, something like this. Yeah, something like this. Okay, that makes the photo a little bit more dense. All right, and um, I think the whole photo is a bit too, uh, now it's a bit too dark, so I'm gonna add a curve adjust adjustment, make it a bit brighter, something like this. All right, and then I'm gonna do a bit of dodge and burn because I, you know, I always do dodge and burn. That's the basic things I do in life is dodge and burn. So I'm gonna add a layer, call it dodge and burn. I'm going to put this in overlay mode. I have my brush. When I do dodge and burn, I only do it at 10% to make it very, uh, you know, very light. And I'm just going to, I take the white. When you take the white, you know, at 10% on the layer that's empty in overlay and you paint, basically what you do is you brighten up a little bit wherever you paint that. Uh, I'm going to brighten it here, that shadow. I just want to make the, the light a bit more interesting, maybe brighten a bit the, you know, the, the sea here a little bit, something like this. And um, I can press X to go back on the blacks, make this a bit bigger, and I'm going to darken, and on the opposite, it's going to darken when I do this. So I'm going to darken a bit the sky here. Okay, and uh, let's see, before and after. Slight changes, but I think it makes the photo a bit more interesting. I still think that your whole photo is a bit dark. So usually I I know, but well, that's what I like to do is I like to fine tune it in Lightroom. For this, I just click on File, um, Close. Then I click on Save. 
and it's going to import it back once I've given that look into Lightroom. Now when I go back to Lightroom, the photo should appear. It is. And I like to, I always like to finish up in Lightroom. I don't know, I'm just so used to Lightroom that I like to do that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a bit of a more um, panoramic look. So I'm, I go in the develop module, I take the crop tool, and I'm going to crop this even further down here and maybe a bit down there. I want to give it a bit more of a panel look, something like this. Okay. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the shadows even more because I find that it was a bit too dark and maybe bring, bring down a bit the highlights. Okay. Yeah, maybe not that much. And then I'm just going to add maybe some vignetting with a post crop vignetting to make it a bit more intense. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can go on for hours and hours, but that's basically it. That's the look I was going for. So uh, I hope you like that trick. You know, I like, you know to ch the main trick here was to change it into a warm uh, photo and, uh, and also to show you how to adjust this little, uh, you know, exposure issue before merging them. Before we finish off, I just want to show you that if you go on my website, which is called photosearch.com and you click here on the app store, you've got all my training here. Basically, what I do is I do a, I have a lot of training on Photoshop and Lightroom, Photoshop C6 and Lightroom 4. Uh, you can find some packages here with all my Lightroom 4 training or all my Photoshop training or all my Photoshop and Lightroom training. I also have a new course that just came out, which is called Understanding Photography with Simple Words, which is really for beginners that want to understand and grasp the basics of photography. I'm pretty proud of that, of that training. It's pretty uh, complete. And um, yeah, that's basically it. You know, you, you can support this podcast by buying my training. They are not expensive. Uh, they, if you click on the download training, you will get directly the courses in a very high definition with all the raw files right away, whether you're on Mac or PC for about $10. If you click here, you will get it on your, you won't get the raw files. You're going to have to ask for them. And it's a bit cheaper. It's around $6. And you get a bit of a slightly less quality video, but you can get it on your iPhone and iPad. So you have the choice between iPhone and iPad for $6 or directly to your Mac or PC for with a better quality and the raw files right away for $10. So they are not very expensive training. Most of the training is between one to two hours. Took me a lot of work to do it and uh, you can support this podcast by purchasing that training. Also, if you're watching this over on YouTube, please subscribe uh, by uh, clicking the subscribe button on, on YouTube. To, uh, to be able to get this weekly podcast for free. Okay, guys, I hope you liked that tutorial. I love doing panels and I hope this will get you into making even more panels. This week's inspiration is a French photographer named Arnaud Fritsch. He's the specialized photographer in doing panels in Paris. And he was the first one that gave me really the inspiration on doing panels. You can check his website here and I invite you to check him out. Okay, so thank you for following this podcast. A little help, I'm asking you if you can leave a little review on iTunes, only if you like that podcast, please only give good reviews. No, I'm kidding. But if you really like that podcast, leave a little review. It helps me getting this podcast known and uh, you know, gives me also the ability to make more podcasts for you guys. So I'll see you next week for another episode.